Good morning, St. Luke's. It is July 12th. We have been sheltering in place for 17 weeks. One of Jesus' favorite ways to teach was to look out at nature and take something that we see every day and apply it to our lives. For example, he would use something like this grass, which is looking a bit parched in the hot sun, isn't it? Well, not much is going to grow in this section because we don't irrigate this part. But with the right conditions and with plenty of water, this will revive and by winter, this section will be a carpet of green. So Jesus would notice things like that on his walks with his disciples. And then he would apply the principles to our spiritual lives. It's like, let's talk about things that parch us and tire us and exhaust us. And let's talk about what revives us and refreshes us and renews us. This morning, we're going to be looking at the parable of the sower. The Gospel today is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Good morning, children of St. Luke's. I wonder if any of you have ever planted a garden. In today's reading, Jesus tells us the parable about planting a garden. Everyone knows that you need good soil that's ready to be planted to make plants grow. Jesus says our hearts are like the soil when we hear God's word. We can hear it, but if our hearts are not open and ready, we're not really listening, which means we won't practice what we hear. Some people hear about God, but if they're distracted by other things, they're not gonna remember. For example, when you're in school, your teacher does not allow you to use cell phones or iPads or other distractions while you're in class so that you're able to give your full attention to the lesson being taught. It's the same thing when we learn about God. We should always give our full attention so that we can not only hear, but hold these things in our hearts and in our minds and then live by God's words. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for every blessing you give us. Thank you for keeping our families and friends safe. Please help us to really hear your word and live our best lives for you. Amen. The parable of the sower. Now, this is a parable that gardeners are really going to like this one. In fact, all the gardeners are going to like the next two or three weeks of parables because in each one, Jesus uses plants or something in nature to get over his spiritual point in his teaching. And, uh, but even if you're not a plant person, this subject matter is going to be of interest to you because like we looked at outside by the fountain there, 
that's very, very dry grass, right? There's no irrigation there and we've had a lot of sun. You might be feeling a little bit like that grass. You might be feeling a bit dry and parched. Or, on the other hand, maybe you're in full bloom, maybe you're vibrant, maybe you're well nourished, or maybe you're somewhere in between. Um, the parable of the sower is, is all about, well, there's multi layers of truth in all of these parables, but it really informs us on things pertaining to the soil of the heart. So when we're talking about the parable of the sower, it's all about the different kinds of soil that the, the seed lands on. In fact, it could actually even be called the parable of soils because it's more about the, the soil in some ways. We'll be talking more about the soil and all the different kinds of soil. Um, it's like, this, so we're talking about the heart. We're talking about soils. Um, it answers questions like this. The parable answers these kinds of questions. Why, why does my spiritual life seem to ebb and flow? I mean, have you noticed that sometimes your spiritual life is, well, it actually can be like your business life. Have you noticed that sometimes your business goes really well and then sometimes not? Or your creative life. Sometimes you're feeling like you're really in tune and you're on a roll and everything's going well. And then other times you're just dry. There's just nothing going on. Um, our emotional lives are the same. There's, it, it, they change a lot. Um, this parable addresses when we're feeling dry, when we're feeling distant from God. What is going on here? Jesus would say, feeling a bit distant, feeling a bit disconnected, feel like you're looking on rather than really enjoying the abundant life that I've been talking to you about. You feel like you're not really, you're not really enjoying that abundant life, that joy is far from you. Now, I think the parable addresses this kind of thing. If we're feeling blocked, when we're not thriving and Personally, I think it's easy to feel like we're not thriving during this, during this particular time in history. Uh, so, the parable of the sower, Jesus would say, what's true in the world of plants, we can learn many lessons in the world of our spiritual lives. You can learn many things from your garden. If the plant doesn't have the right soil, it will not thrive. If the seed doesn't have the right conditions, it's not going to grow. Um, there are things in this life that cause you not to thrive. There are things in this life that cause you not to grow. You're not going to be producing the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, and self-control unless you have the right conditions here in the heart, in the interior life. And what he has done in this parable is, is that Jesus basically lists things that cause you not to thrive. And none of them are surprising to us. They're all um, common things. So the parable begins, the sower goes out to sow, and the sower scatters seeds everywhere. So we have God as the sower, and there's this indiscriminate throwing of seed onto every kind of soil that you can imagine. God doesn't pick and choose who gets grace, who gets love, who gets acceptance, who gets a second chance. It's like the seed lands everywhere on every soil. Rocky ground, hard ground, good soil. There's this extravagant throwing of seed. The parable goes on to tell us that the seed lands on all the different kinds of soil. Some of it lands on good soil. The plant grows, the plant thrives, 
and it multiplies 30-fold, 100-fold, 50-fold. On the other hand, some of the seed lands on poor soil, bad soil, inhospitable soil, it withers up, the plant dies, nothing. Now, we know this to be true in the plant world, right? In the, in the world of gardening. I remember when I first went to the Midwest, and I'm not really that great a gardener, but I do remember we had this massive garden in the a part of the parsonage in the country, in the Midwest. And every year, one of the farmers, one of the neighbors who happened to be a farmer, would till the garden. Beautiful, black, rich, warm, loamy soil. And really all you had to do was rip open the packet of seed and fling it in there. And by, you did very, very little else. By the end of the summer, you had more squash and tomatoes and potatoes and flowers of every sort imaginable. You didn't know what to do with it all. It was a short growing season. Uh, it would rain in the evening sometimes. It was just the most perfect condition for, for gardening. And then I came here. And my initial thought was, well, this is going to be really easy here because it's beautiful weather. We have all the sun. However, as you know, gardening is pretty tricky here. We, we don't have the water and the soil, there's a lot of clay in the soil. So it's really kind of hard. It's, it takes some skill to have a garden here, right? Um, so we know this, we've experienced this in our, in our everyday life. Now, a similar thing can happen in our spiritual lives, a similar thing, the soil of the heart. So the parable is the sower goes out to sow, the seed is extravagantly, indiscriminately flung onto every kind of soil, hard path, rocky ground, thorny ground, good soil. The soil of the heart. So Jesus is talking, I think, one of the ways to look at this is he's speaking about the condition of our inner life. What's going on in the inside? So if it's the soil, it's the hidden part of us. It's underneath the surface, right? The thoughts, the parts of us that no one else sees, the interior dialogue that's going on internally, the plans, the hopes, the dreams, the hurts, the memories, the disappointments, all that stuff is underneath the surface, isn't it? Nobody else sees that. All these sorts of things can go on inside. Now, some of the things that go on in the inside, Jesus goes on to tell us, can choke out new life. It can choke out things like the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, self-control. It can actually choke out these kinds of good fruit. So he says in verse 19, verse 18, Jesus tells us parable about all the different seeds landing on different kinds of soil and all the different kinds of response. And he says, and it's kind of a word of warning here, I think this is an important verse. Hear the word of the parable, he says. And that word here means understand. And implicit within that word in the original language is, now I want you to act on the truth that you know he's saying. What he's saying is, is that if I tell you a parable, and if you become aware of a weed in your life that is choking out new life, I want you to do something about that. I want you to act on it. I don't want you to just sit and listen to it and agree with it, I want you to act on it. Because he goes on to say that what can happen is that something can be true to us and can hit us as true, like God has shown me this, you know, or I'm listening and God's shown me something, it might be something that God shows me that maybe I'm too judgmental. Or maybe God shows me that my envy isn't helping at all here. 
I really need to learn how to start to release this more. Or maybe God shows me, um, I really haven't been attentive to my spiritual life at all for a long time. Not really. I, I really haven't paid that much attention. Whatever it is that God shows us, Jesus is saying, I need you to act on this. Because if you don't, it's like it, you've never heard it. It won't do you any good at all. It's like birds coming down and plucking up that seed on the rocky path and just flying away. It won't do you any good at all unless you move it into action. God could be talking to us about a new way of learning how to deal with conflict or a new way to prioritize time or a new way to prioritize the spending of money. It could be something simple like practically becoming more involved with a person or a neighbor or a friend and that thoughts come to you one or two times. Jesus is saying when a thought comes and it's a good thought and you think it's from God you want to act on that or it will be like you've never ever you won't glean anything from the, the wisdom of the parable. I think a lot of wisdom and insight is lost because it's ignored that verse 18. I think we lose we can lose a lot of wisdom and insight you know we either ignore things or we rationalize things away or um, and it's too bad because I think what can happen is is that the garden doesn't thrive we miss the good that God wants to grow up within us if I don't act on what I know to be true, then I, I'm, I'm, the one who, I'm the one who loses out here, right? Because in the parable, it's not the sower who holds back. That's an interesting thought. In the parable, it's not the sower who is somehow withholding something. It's the soil that either responds or does not respond. So, I think that we can hold out um, and miss something good uh, Jesus is teaching. We can miss out something that would free us up, something that would be life-giving to us, something that would bring a lightness of heart. We can actually say no to these things. Jesus says, well, that's just like seed landing on the wrong soil and then the birds come and eat the seed it's gone there's no growth there's no benefit it's gone rocky hard heart and by that i'm not really talking about a bad person i think you could be a kind person basically i think you could be a sweet person but you could still resist god's call on the inside which is a strange thing to say but if you consider it I think you might find it to have, uh, to have some truth that you don't have to be mean to resist the nudge of the spirit. <laughs> this isn't about a bad person or a good person. This parable isn't about bad people and good people. It's about how open we are to God or how closed we are for whatever reason. And by the way, I don't think we have you know, we're all good soil or we're all rocky soil or we're all thorny soil. I think we have multiple kinds of soil within us at any time on an any given day. I think we have a lot of choices on what we do. Jesus said, there are things that can choke out new life. You need to be aware of that. There are things that are weeds and thorns and all sorts of things that can choke out new life. He says, for example, trouble and hardship and suffering. That can choke out new life. That can steal your, steal your joy. Um, so it's kind of a strange thing because you would think, well, wouldn't trouble bring me closer to God? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, it can, but it could also make you quite bitter. 
and it could make you quite hard and you could resist even more. Uh, some people do move closer to God when trouble comes, but sometimes people move away. You know, do we lean in when trouble comes or do we back off? That would be something to think about, you know. And Jesus goes on to list more dangers. He says, verse 22, the cares of the world and the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth. The deceitfulness of wealth. No amount of money can stop you from worrying if you're prone to worry, <laughs> right? You know, wealth has its limits, doesn't it? I mean, it can't really buy you peace of mind, can it? I can't promise you that. Yeah. There's no place to go to find peace because you take yourself with you wherever you go. So peace has to be something that we have here. <laughs> yeah, it's possible to spend a lot of time thinking about a problem or a person or a solution and that can kind of wear you down. It, that can wear you down. Just trying to figure things out all the time, it can wear you down or try to understand someone or something. The cares of this world can choke out the new life in you, just like weeds can choke out a plant. Yeah, Jesus, verse 18, key point, listen to what the parable is saying he's saying. Listen to it now. Can you identify a weed that is choking the life out of you? It's like, yes, I can. I'm worried. Okay, well, you've identified it. Yes, I can. I'm, I'm, I'm angry. Or, or I'm disillusioned. Or I'm grieving. Or I can't get ahead. I'm frustrated. I can't get ahead. I mean, identification is always a good first step, isn't it? Because that's about self-awareness. That's about self-awareness. To even identify what it is that is holding you back. Actually, you know, I was thinking today that it, it would not be a surprise to me if we look back on this time, if the church looks back on this time, this shelter in place, as a time of great temptation. And the reason I say that is, is because so many people have become overcome with fear. You know, scurrying away from everyone. Have you noticed that when you go to the grocery store? It's not a nice experience. I used to really like going to the grocery store because then I could kind of plan my menu each, each day because I really like to cook and I like to plan a menu and I would walk leisurely around a store and get ideas. And now, I mean, it is not a pleasant experience. Eyes averted, heads down, you know, everybody's frightened of dis the disease and uh, people are quite unfriendly because they're scared. They're scared. What, it's a t I think we're going through a time of great temptation. You know, fear of the disease, fear of economic collapse, fear of civil unrest, fear of isolation, fear of grief. I mean, there's a lot of things that humanity is handling just now, going through, trying to navigate. Um, it, it's not surprising that people would succumb to depression and malaise and frustration and anger. I mean, these are challenging, challenging times. Um, all the more reason, I think, to pay attention to the soil of the heart, the soil of the heart, Jesus is teaching, pay attention now. Think about what's going on here, what is, what is bubbling to the surface just now. I think that gratitude never fails to bring a harvest of joy. Right? So when we identify weeds, which is relatively easy for me to do, actually, identify whatever the weed is or weeds are, 
gratitude never fails to bring a harvest of joy. When we become aware of what is diminishing our lives, when we can see the weeds and we can see um, what is choking the life out of us, one of the best ways to attend to your spiritual life is gratitude. It is, it has amazing power to turn a life around quickly. Gratitude. Now, gratitude is a powerful, powerful spiritual tool and it works relatively quickly. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have found that most things in our interior life and in our spiritual life seem to take a long, long, long time. Well, here's one thing I've noticed, that gratitude is quick and it's fast. In other words, if you start to be grateful it bears fruit very quickly within a day within a day now there's very very few things that i could say to someone if you want to see immediate results in your spiritual life do this there's there's not that many things i could come up with but there is one thing i have noticed and that is gratitude it very very quickly turns things around so if you're going along and you come across this parable of the sower and you start to identify a whole bunch of weeds or a, a particular weed and you think, yeah, that parable makes sense to me. I know what's making me dry. I know what's making me parched and I know exactly what I need to do. Uh, one of the things that helps immediately is to start to speak back to God all the things that you are grateful for. It seems to make a difference in a very short space of time and turns you around very, very quickly within a 24 hour period. It turns you around very, very quickly to start to see the new thing that God wants to grow up within you. So I want to encourage you with that, that it's not just about identifying the wheat, which is a great first step, and it's really an important first step. But also, and then follow through on what God is asking of, of you, that's important, verse 18. But that third little part of gratitude will make all the difference in the world within a very short space of time. Peace be with you. Thank you.
Now I want to thank everyone who has sent in their offering this week. And I know I keep saying this every single week, but I do want to take the time to thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, for those of you who have gone through the bank, yes, we did get some bank checks this week. Uh, we also got uh, envelopes put through our mailbox. And we also got cash put through the mailbox. So for the person who sent the cash offering, thank you, we got that too. We had that all this week. I want to thank each one of you for your faithfulness to God and your giving during this time. Thank you. 